She is power. She is love. She is hope. She inspires. She is many journeys in one lifetime. She is the people, an individual, a never-ending story of the beauty of possibility. I nearly didn't get into medical school, I put it oh. that way. Um, I got rejected from a couple of medical schools. I was a treasury officer, went through the ranks in treasury. You find the whole reverend thing geared towards the male. So I had to learn now how to find my voice. Mm. I think the other thing for me would be hard work and continuous self-improvement. My faith is everything. Be a part of She Inspires this and every Wednesday on the I Am Drive on sunny 88.7 FM, 8.30 AM and live on Facebook same time. Also join in on Sunny TV every Wednesday at 8.30 PM. She Inspires is proudly brought to you by She Inspires. Women are a pillar of strength. Women symbolize resilience and the massive contribution of women to family and society cannot be overemphasized and here on she inspires we bring you inspiring women of our times who are pillars in our societies in their own unique and special ways on she inspires today i have reverend dr mrs edem Supo. she's executive director advisory for dion and noid international she's also an ordained minister of the gospel at the Lord's Pentecostal Church International. Reverend, it's great to have you join us on She Inspires as an inspiring woman of our times. And I trust our time with you will be a blessing to anyone who's watching us or listening to us today. Thank you. I'm also honored to be here. Fantastic. I've heard that you spent quite a number of your years, early years of marriage, if I'm right, yeah. in, in Liberia. Yeah. A little over 10 years. But what took you to, to, to Liberia? Can you share that? Actually, it's my husband that had a World Bank appointment with the World Bank projects in Liberia, uh, specifically at the Ministry of Finance. So, and in all, we spent 11 years. Mm. And so that required that I spend a lot of time in Liberia. So before that, you spent all your time in Ghana? Yes. If I'm right? Yes. Okay. So was there any, I mean, switching from Ghana to Liberia, was it drastic? Was it gradual moving from here to join your husband in Liberia? So I would say that I personally never moved entirely. Okay. Yeah, because the, the children were here. We decided at the beginning of that contract that we wanted to keep our home in Ghana. All your children were born at the time? No. Okay. No. In How fact, many had come then? Uh, in fact, we had not started. You hadn't even started, started with the children? Yes. Okay. We hadn't started having children. And so we decided that um, we would still keep our home in Ghana and uh, continue to... Uh, I will be visiting as often as possible at the time, I was working in Barclays, now APSA. And uh, in the beginning, it was quite uh, difficult because I had to use my leave days. And uh, that was not sufficient. And so... Our leave days never sufficient? Yes. They're never sufficient. <laughs> yes. So um, we agreed that I resign and we start our firm. That is Dion and Noid International. That will give me time to... Uh, grow something for ourselves because ultimately we wanted to work for ourselves in the future and so it was time for one of us to make that sacrifice and to start that while the other is you know uh, doing the other corporate work you know so my husband had to uh, work in Liberia and I had to be supporting mm. here and there. Yeah. Any cultural shocks moving Ghanaian woman mm. having to be in Liberia? <laughs> Any cultural shocks you could share with us? Yeah, I, I think the the language, you know, the language is, is interesting. You know, it took me a while to begin to really understand them when they speak. It's almost like pigeon, but it's not also <laughs> pigeon, <laughs> you know, and then the food, you know, but generally they are very nice uh, people. Okay. And um, 
Our stay there was very fruitful and we made a lot of, you know, contacts, friends and indeed family. Yeah. So you mentioned being the executive director advisory at uh, Dion and Noid International. What exactly is Dion and Noid International into? Okay, so Dion and Noid International is an audit tax and advisory firm. And so what we do is to help our clients, uh, you know, prepare financial statements, you know, uh, resolve tax issues with the state, you know, and also we provide advisory services like human resource management services, training, recruitment, you know, developing policy manuals and what have you. So that's what Dion and Noid International um, is into. We've been around for 11 years and uh, by the grace of God we are in seven countries. Wow. Yes. And I, I believe um, God has been good to us because last year um, the ICA, that's our major regulator, judged us as FMA. Congratulations. Yes. And uh, that, has, that has been really good for the firm. And I'd like to use the opportunity to, you know, thank all those who worked with us, you know, partners and associates, staff. It's been great. Let's talk about building Dion and Noid International. What has been the experience setting up your own firm in Ghana has moved on to other countries, seven yeah. other countries. Yeah. Share with us. So it takes a lot of determination because at the time when I resigned from my my banking uh, profession at the time, it was entirely new to me. The consulting business was entirely new and um, I needed to learn a lot on the job and also take up courses and all of that. I, I needed to, you know, go around and try to uh, sell the services we were hoping to, you know, offer the public and that was not easy you know, at the time. And, uh, but with time, you know, I think that it picked up because uh, the team that we started with and myself, we were willing to push ourselves. We work around the clock, you know, to write proposals, you know, do presentations and give our best when the clients offer us an opportunity to serve them either in tax, audit, or in advisory services. And so, in all, I would say that God has been good, but it has taken a lot of hard work and, and determination. determination. Yeah. So let's talk about your passion about women and self-development. And um, for any young woman listening to us, watching us, who has her eyes on attaining leadership, you, you've had 11 years of experience building your own firm in this country. You're also an ordained minister of the gospel. I'd like to, you for you to share with us how relevant is self-development in mm. one's quest to attain leadership as mm. a woman? That's an interesting one. Um, I'll take it this way. Anytime we talk about self-development, we are looking at um, how we can enhance ourselves so that we can achieve our dreams or aspirations. And so we must ask ourselves, who do we want to be, you know, in X number of years? And what would it take for us to get there and be that kind of a woman in this case. And so if it requires that you need to educate yourself in certain areas, you need to um, spend the money, the time to educate yourself. Sometimes it will require mentoring, you know, you need to avail yourself to be mentored, to become the woman that you want to be. And then sometimes you also need to probably unlearn certain habits that may not help you to be the kind of woman or leader you want to be. And, and so basically self-development is critical if you want to become a leader because at that point you are a person of influence and there is not much excuse that is given you if you are not able to live the talk 
you know. So self-development is that which helps you to prepare okay. to become that person that you want to be. You know, the first time I ever saw your profile, I was mm. taking it back. I'm like, Lord, how does she do it all? I remember that was the first question, but at the time I could not ask you, but you're my guest, so I can <laughs> ask you this question I've had yeah. on my mind all this while because I mean, we've spoken about you being executive director, advisory yeah. for yeah. Dion and Noid International. Yeah. You're an ordained minister of the gospel. You're an owner of Leverage Homes. You own a salon. You wear so many hats. Your wife, you have three children. Today, I want to finally <laughs> ask you the question I've been wanting to ask you. How do you do it all and still keep it all together and look as pretty as you're looking? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to say that it takes the grace of God, you know. However, you also need to be a person that defines your priorities early enough to know what you want done at what time and then also you also need to learn to delegate because like you said you really cannot be all of that all the time and so you need people to be there for you you need uh, teams to support you so for example in Dion and Noid International I have a team of professionals that I work with consultants who also offer the services you know I, I usually will do the you know supervisory uh, role or function and so that helps so you don't have to do so much you have people that are doing that um, to to help grow the fair and the same applies to the church uh, we are blessed to have you know dedicated people who have also availed themselves to be used by god however as the pastor you need to guide them you need to encourage them you need to inspire them sometimes the going gets tough Ministry is hard work, and it's not always as nice as it looks, you know, because dealing with people who are not coming to work for you, they, they are in church because they want to encounter God. They can decide to leave at any time. They have their own expectations, yeah. and you have to find a way of keeping them you know, inspiring them to stay and to continue to trust God and be there for them when they need you. You can't do that on your own. So you need people, you know, the church council, you know, leaders of the fellowships and all of that. And once you learn to uh, be a team player and to delegate effectively, it helps you to achieve a lot. Okay. Yeah. So I'd say that uh, it hasn't been... I'm not a superwoman. You're not. Uh, yes, I'm not a superwoman. <laughs> Even at home, okay. you know. And that, I would say, that has been my priority. Yes. Uh, despite the busy schedules, I make time for my husband and the children. Because we find ourselves in a critical um, period when the children are young and they need a lot of attention. They need you to help them with school projects. You need to be there for school meetings. And I also need to be there for my husband as a wife. You know, so um, that comes first. And then the others fall in line. Yeah, fall in line. <laughs> this is She Inspires, profiling inspired women of our times. Our guest on She Inspires today is Reverend Dr. Mrs. Edem Sopo. She's the Executive Director for Advisory, Dion and Noid International. And she's also an ordained minister of the gospel at the Lord's Pentecostal Church International. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Me bro, me. Let me share it with you. Daffy's or him feminine mischief. I am a secret back up. 
Also, me be a me messes a pacama a bra menti ya ubi a a flow mami me wo ye chino na me messes no a ma ye me sha si ano dafis or hima feminine this channel a ban kasa with no pain to dafis or hima feminine this channel the best yes you. Open a did with her. Duffy's Health and Beauty, Ewo East Legon American House, Kumasen So, Yebeng Tech Hospital, Enye Mapem for Sankra to a FDA Ashishemwa Jetu Muse, a ye. Welcome back from the break. A big thank you to our sponsors who are making it possible for us to bring you She Inspires, Duffy's Health and Beauty. She's into 100% organic skincare products. So anytime you need anything skincare, talk to Duffy's Health and Beauty. And thank you to Ajele Jewelry uh, for my accessories. Check her out. She does unique handmade jewelry and accessories. Check her out at www.shop agile.com and going back to reverend dr mrs edem so far we're having an interesting type already now in 2018 you charge students at upsa to acquire employable skills i mean someone listening to us is one what do you mean by employable <laughs> skills particularly for someone who's looking for a job and has chanced on she inspires today what do you mean by we should get employable skills okay so um that that was a very uh, good um, opportunity that I, I had with the UPSA, they, they charged me to speak to their final year students at the time to prepare them for the job market. Now, as an HR consultant myself, um, there are a few things we look out for in applicants or, you know, employees when they come into the organization. So one of the critical things we must understand is every business is in to solve problems. The services you provide is to solve problems. So you need employees who have problem solving skills, you know, who are critical thinkers. When they come into the organization, you, no matter the cost they offer, you want to know if they are people who can think outside the box so and just provide. just me showing you my degree or my master's is, no. is not enough for you? No, it's not enough. And that is why there is a probationary period. So within the three months or six months that you stay in the organization, the, the management of the organization is assessing your performance and your attitude and everything to know if you are somebody they should employ for the long term. And so if you are that kind of person that has, you know, critical thinking skills or problem solving skills, you are likely to be retained because you're coming to help to solve the problems. You're coming to help to offer the solutions that the clients of the organization will be serving. And so that is critical. The second thing is or the second employable skill that I'll talk about is self-management skills. Now, when you have somebody who is skilled in this manner, that person knows how to manage their time. Because in business, time is everything. And so um, the employer wants to be sure that you, you know what to do at what, at time. what time. You don't waste your time you don't waste resources you are on top of your schedules and that comes together to prove that you have self-management skills and then the third thing i'll probably talk about is communication skills in our line of business we do a lot of presentations we write proposals reports and all of that so as an employer when you come in um, if you have the first two I've just talked about, I would also look at how you communicate, you know, your thoughts, how you even communicate with your team members, the clients, when you go to client site and all of that. Both oral and written communication skills is critical. If, if you send me reports, I don't have to struggle to understand what you are, you know, what you are seeing in the report it has to be error free you know as much as possible so for me those are the top three i'd like to focus on 
and I know that will go for a lot of employers. Thank you very much. I think that's, that's been very helpful for anyone listening uh, to us or watching us. Let's talk about your, your life in ministry. You know, earlier on, you talked about how challenging it is to be in ministry, particularly as a woman. I'm sure we're going to talk more as we respond to this one. Uh, but can you share some challenges and opportunities that this role comes, talking about your time in ministry? Because, I mean, one can say that it is a largely male dominated area and for a while back a woman even in a collar and all was a bit <laughs> awkward you're yeah. in those circles share share yeah. something with us i had the opportunity to be ordained when we went to liberia and so before we went to liberia i wasn't a minister um but when we went to liberia we we decided to start a fellowship in our home um and invited a few friends and that's how uh, the church started at the time. And with time, the leadership thought that um, with what we were doing, you know, um, it was good to ordain myself and my husband to take up the church there. And that was how ministry started for us. And so far, I would say that um, a lot has changed, even in our church, because in our church, I'm the second woman to be ordained as a minister. Wow. And our church is 60 years this year. And you're the second. <laughs> yes. I did not see so, that one coming. <laughs> <laughs> so wow. that should tell you. But uh, one of the things I have realized is that when, you, when you're given the opportunity, especially as a woman, to become a minister... Um, there's so much that is expected of you, um, more than just being the regular minister or pastor. People also want to know if that is going to have any effect on how you carry yourself as a woman. And in, in that, I would say that a lot of people are looking at if you're going to start acting Bossy, bossy, you know, <laughs> for lack of a better <laughs> word, you know, uh, or you know, you you're going to be um, in everyone's it, face, yes, in, in everyone's face, and all of that. And so, there is this um, responsibility that you carry to be yourself, be be focused on who God has called you to be. Um, exhibit your ministry calling, whether you've been called as a pastor, a preacher, a teacher, you know, um, you know, a prophetess, in the case of a woman, you know, whatever it is, you need to show the world or your congregation that you know your calling and you're focused on that. You do not have to be pressured to be in competition with the male ministers just be yourself and do it with humility god has a certain grace that he gives you know when you operate in your ministry and you do it with that kind of grace you will have a lot of people that will be drawn to you and there will be a lot of opportunities for you to minister to people that you'll be surprised that even male ministers may not be able to reach because of your feminine attributes. And so I would say that it is a great opportunity, even though, of course, there are few challenges. There are times that you may go for programs and because you're a female minister, especially when you're not in uniform, okay. uniform meaning you're not in color, you know, you may not be giving, you know, the kind of um, probably um, reverence or acknowledgement that the other male the ministers may. Yeah. Yes, you know. And then sometimes people also mistake you for a minister's spouse, not a minister. <laughs> that, that, would, that would be expected. <laughs> have you ever had one of those you times? <laughs> oh, yes. A few times I have had that, you know. Um, we've gone for programs where we've been introduced, you know. Ours is quite unique because okay. both of us are reverends and doctors. And so when we are introduced, 
let's welcome Reverend Soso and So and Reverend Dr. Soso and So. You know, somehow, whether it's automatic or something, you 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 find the whole Reverend thing geared towards the male. Possibly as you guys, the one going <laughs> and to then, speak in your squad, when it exactly. could be the other way around. <laughs> exactly. That's pretty interesting. Very, very interesting. But I think uh, with time, that is fading away, especially with me, because um, I have had the opportunity to do a lot in ministry, and I give a great deal of thanks to my husband, who has been the most supportive person in my life, you know, as a, a female minister, you know, he, he gives me a lot of opportunity in our ministry to do uh, a lot, everything that I've always wanted to do in ministry. And that has um, made it possible for our congregation and all who follow us to know that I'm not only a minister's spouse, mm -hmm. but a minister you as well. So I thank God for that. How do you think the Christian community can work better at embracing women in leadership in our churches and Christian organizations? So one of the ways um, the Christian community can do that is by projecting women ministers, creating the platform for women ministers to be known and seen. Visibility is important, you know, and um, when, when a lot of the women ministers in our society are called upon as often as the male ministers are called upon to do all the ministerial, uh, play the ministerial roles in the society. Then a lot of people will see the female ministers more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the visibility is important, you know, and that will do a lot because I know that they are quite uh, reputable reverend ministers who are uh, females who are doing very well, but they do not have the visibility that the male ministers have. So that platform is critical to showcase that, you know, uh, to showcase the females as well. Yeah. Oh my, well, we're, <laughs> we're almost running out of time with Reverend Dr. Mrs. Adam Sopo. She's Executive Director for Advisory, Dion and Noid International. But before I let her go, I mean, looking at her professional life, you started from Barclays, moving on to starting your own firm, mm. uh, owner of Leverage Homes, you're running a salon as a minister. What, what are your top three lessons mm. you would want to share with us? On she inspires today and I know you've shared so much but another thing you can capture for us one of the lessons I'd like to share with listeners today is we need the grace and the wisdom of God in life you know to be successful at anything because one of the favorite scriptures that always sets me thinking is Ecclesiastes 9:11 where it says that the race is not to the swift, neither the battle to the strong, you know, or wisdom for the learned and all of that. In life, time and chance happen to them all. That's what the scripture says. And so you need God's grace and wisdom, no matter how smart you are, no matter how privileged you no think you are, you are, no matter how beautiful you are as a woman, you need God's grace and wisdom to take you to where you should be in life, you know. So that is critical. The God factor is key. The God factor. Yeah. Then maybe secondly, I would say that I have learned to treat people fairly and kindly. Okay. Why? Because the people you see in life today, you'll be surprised who they become in future. And so if you don't learn to treat people fairly and kindly, you may meet them someday in life and you may not be able to look them in the, in eye. the eye. And so um, be a person that treats people well. It will help you because even in the line of business, as a business person, I have realized that relationship 
goes a long way in business. It is not always, you know, what you have to offer, but sometimes relationship opens doors for you. So we need to learn to treat people fairly and kindly. Okay. And then probably the last thing I would say is take care of yourself. Ah, talk about taking care of yourself. How do you take care of yourself? <laughs> <laughs> Share with us how you do it. <laughs> yeah, take Reverend care of Adam. yourself because if you have any dream or goal to achieve, it will take you to see that happen. Mm -hmm. So you need to take care of yourself so that you don't cut short your life. What do you do? Share with us. Want to take <laughs> us into your life. What do you do to take care of yourself so we can do the same? Yeah. What I do to take care of myself, uh, I believe you're talking about what I do. Leisure. Maybe wellness. Yes, yes. What do you do to uh, I'm, I'm, I'm doing well these days to take care of my diet. Because as you grow older, you realize that what you're taking is very important to keep you healthy and fit. And so I, I try to take, uh, be more cautious what I take in and to take the time to exercise, you know, once in a while, as often as I can because of my schedules, um, not necessarily because I enjoy it all the time, but I know it's good for me. It's good for you, so you got to do it. <laughs> you know, and this body, I have come to realize, is what will carry us to do whatever we need to do. So we need to take care of ourselves. No matter what you do, make time for yourself. And I, I love to uh, listen to a lot of um, gospel music. In fact, that is why I was drawn to Sunny FM ah, in the first place. Do stay you with know. us. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Don't go in away. In my home, everywhere. Anybody who knows me knows that my life Sunny. is Sunny FM. Sunny. At home, in my car, everywhere. I'm playing that, you know, because I get to listen to very good soul-searching, um, you know, godly music and messages that help to, you know, keep me on the path I have chosen, you know as a minister and so that is what i do in my leisure time i love to spend time with my family, Your family. we watch movies together or we travel you know just to spend time and relax okay. or unwind if you thank yeah. you so much for coming on the show uh, she inspires we appreciate you for making the time mm -hmm. and maybe we'll catch up with you in a few years and see how yeah. far what the lord is doing in your life and yeah. what more you can share to inspire more women god bless you for being on she inspires thank you all for god joining us on today's edition of she inspires we've been with reverend dr mrs edem sopo executive director for advisory Dion and Noid International. She's also an ordained minister of the gospel at the Lord's Pentecostal Church International. She Inspires is proudly supported by Duffy's Health and Beauty and also Ajele Accessories. Ajele provides me with my accessories. She makes beautiful and unique handmade accessories that you're going to love. Check her out on our website at www.shopajile.com. I'm Jennifer Jessica Dancock.